Here it is, folks. The card is sideways. The revs are up. And for the second time today, this will settle the overall win. Today, Glenn Helen. And there is Alessi already putting the rock star McKinnis is in the out front. He closes off Andrew Short and Josh Grant. And for the second time today, Mike Alessi has grabbed the whole back. This time, the question is, can he hold it? Villapoto is a lot further back in the pack this time, but Josh Grant, who looked fantastic the first moto, looked like he was going to get away. And short, right there where they want to be. And another bad start for Chad Reed, although not quite as bad this time. You see him bumping elbows in about fifth place. But this is a lesson still made out front. Kid came into this race having finished second in a moto at Glen Helen six straight times. He got third in the first moto today. Wants to win this one badly. There's Josh Grant second, Andrew Short third. We'll put the radar out and try to find our first moto winner. Ryan Filippoto, he's, I believe, just at the tail end of the top ten. That's going to be tough on RV to come all the way through. Yeah, he's going to be, he's going to take on a lot of roost. And like he said in, in his, uh, at the top of the show, he goes, I got to get good starts, stay out of trouble. The way you stay out of trouble is get out here like Mike. You don't even get dirty. You don't even need your tear-offs. Hey, you know, there's nobody in front of you that could possibly make a mistake and affect you. So uh, Ryan's got a little bit of work to do to stay out of trouble and to get to these guys. He, he better be fast because he's already given them about 10 seconds. Remember the way it works here at AMA Pro Motocross. Two motos scored equally. So if Josh Grant finished second in Moto 1, beats Philip Hunter in Moto 2, he has a shot at being the overall winner on the day. And that rear credit is definitely working yeah. downhill now. I was just going to say. And you're, you're locked up all the way down into that berm, especially in these early laps. A little bit of water on the track. After about a lap and a half, that'll go all mixed in really well. And, he won't get roosted as much, but easier to stop right there. But these guys are going all out right now. Mike came into that sand section faster than I see him come in all day. I thought he was going to go off the track. Saved it. So he is irritated with the way the first moto went down. His little mistake is cost him the rhythm and the race. He feels he looks really good so far. Andrew, fifth the first moto. More of the same. You know, it wasn't a disaster by any means, but he really wants to get up in there and stay with the leaders. They got away from the first moto. He's got another opportunity to stay with them this time. Millsaps, the teammate, is in fourth, and then fifth is Reed. Here it is. He's got to battle pretty hard in moto number one. They're good friends. They actually ride together a lot in Florida. But Reed knows a little bit better start this time than when he had in moto one. He has an opportunity to win this race. So here he goes to the inside at Millsaps. Will that line hook up all the way back up the hill? Millsap will have the inside when they get back to the top. This is what's great about motocross. You've got to pick lines that last all the way around the corner, and Reed's line did pay off. Yeah, Millsap really opened the door for him down there. I was just about to say that he had to pass Millsap's twice the first moto, so Millsap could uh, maybe cover those moves a little bit, and he just opened the door right there, made it easy for Reed, and Villapoto <laughs> saw that as well. He goes, if you do that again, if I haven't got you by then, I'm diving to the inside. You know, the battle we were anticipating is Villapoto versus Reed. They didn't get to see each other in Moto 1 because Reed had a bad start. Villapoto wants to get around Millsap quickly like Reed did to go after the 22. Reed was the fastest rider in both qualifying sessions today. Let's see if that speed manifests itself in the racing. Reed goes oh. behind, then Millsap and Villapoto, they're hauling. All the heavy hitters right up front. Nobody's stuck in the pack anymore. No excuses. All these guys out front. So much talent. Look at that the way Millsap is through that sand section. So much body English to put that front wheel right where he wants it because if it goes six inches to the right, you're on top of the car, but knives, you crash. So much balance and strength it takes to get to that sand section fast every lap. It's not fast enough, but he's still losing just inches at a time to Villapoto. It's inevitable Villapoto is going to put more pressure on Villapoto going to choose an outside line in this right hand corner. will lead to the inside, and then they fall away. His inside has been faster all day long, but Millsap makes some work on the outside. He's going to be a tough customer. He knows Villapoto wants to go to the front, but he's not going to make it easy on him. Villapoto, wow, dancing big time on those three ones. Millsap, he got the best run I've seen anyone get all day up the hill. He, he almost cleared the top. He didn't get as much air. But still, as well as good of a drive as he got up that, as, as, you know, as well as he got over the top, didn't make up that much ground on Chad, and Villapoto still just breathing down his neck. Now Reed would like to go after Short next. They battled hard in Moto 1, also passed each other back and forth a few times. Millsaps right there behind Reed. If Reed makes a mistake, he could Reed pass him. So we've got four riders very close. There you see Short, Reed, Millsaps, and Villapoto. While this happens, riders in second, 
Ryder up front. That's Josh Grant second. And Mike Alessi out front. Trying to get distance on this pack. Alessi right now for four seconds late. That's his specialty, getting the whole shots and taking off. Short still hanging on. Oh, nice move by Villapoto. Scrubbed over the top of that jump. Stayed in the inside. This is what they call a saddleback section for the old school California motocross fans. Who's got the guts down here? It's Villapoto. So he gets around no saddles. We might see the Chad Reed versus Ryan Villapoto battle in AMA Pro Motocross that we've been anticipating. Yeah, well, that's going on. Although they're closing on short a little bit, he's still hanging on. I mean, he really let those guys get away the first moto. Took Chad a little while to get around him. And uh, Andrew fired right back, but once he got around him again, he, he got away. And Andrew made that adjustment, it looks like. He's running the pace. This is the test that people are wondering if Andrew Short could pass. When they put the pressure on him, could he go to another level? He's going to have to right now because he's got two of the fastest hits in business. Breathing down his neck. We're just getting started here at Glen Helen. Stay tuned on speed. Michael Lessig's out front. Can he hold it? Welcome back. Battle on our hands here at Glen Helen. Ryan Villapoto all over Chad Reed. They both jump together. Now a rough downhill. Who's got the guts to hang on the inside? Villapoto's going to try to put Reed up against the wall. And Ryan Villapoto takes the spot from Chad Reed. With Andrew Short right in front of him. This is the battle we anticipated for the last week. All the conjecture who is faster, Villapoto or Reed. Big statement from Villapoto. And now he goes right after Short, David Bailey. And Short might not realize that just changed behind yes. him. That battle got hotter. Here comes Villapoto, 75 miles an hour. That's the fastest section of the track, but no one has been able to make this inside work. Ryan Villapoto just did. He passes two riders, two of the fastest in the course of about three quarters. Villapoto on the move. Take us through it, David. Well, Villapoto made his commitment going up that hill and knew he could force Chad wide. And he didn't back down from it at all. Chad did a nice job to try to get around him in that powder, but just ran out of room. Mike Alessi, meanwhile, out front. He has no idea that's going on behind him. And he said his challenge this year is to ignore everyone else. Ride your own race. Put in your own laps. And that's exactly what the man from Victorville, California, has done. He's never won a moto here at his home track. But it looks very good right now. He's got a gap of about seven seconds over Josh Grant. But you see the countdown on the top of the screen. We're going to go 30 minutes and two laps. There's a lot of racing left. Long, long race here. He looks awesome right now. He's doing everything right. He's flowing. He's missing all those bumps coming down the hill. He railed that corner of the on that hill. And for this moto, he, I said he already he lost the camel back. Light the load. He's rolled up his sleeves, going to work, checking out. He was doing this in the first run a little bit. He had that mess up at the bottom of the hill, got stuck in the berm. I really think that uh, Mike doesn't make the same mistake twice. At Villapoto, though, that, that's that's the only question I have. I don't think we see a scrub very often with Alessi. That's how hard he's pushing. I just think Villapoto, from what we saw of him, that little flurry to get get by uh, both Short and Chad. And that's, uh, that's the kind of speed that, that uh, Mike knows he might not be able to match. Wow, and so far Grant not able to match the speed of Alessi right now. Grant, remember, put pressure on Alessi, but Alessi made a mistake. He got around in 101. This time, only a few laps in. He's nearly eight seconds back. If he doesn't pick up the pace before long, you got the Philip Poto and Reed Express back there at third and fourth, and they're pulling each other along. Yeah, Andrew was not able to weather that storm, so now Reed following Villapoto is not letting him get away. Grant's going to get some company here pretty quick, but uh, all these guys are pretty far back from Alessi still, so I mentioned Alessi, you know, at times I think he knows that they're a little bit faster, but he's going to be a lot faster because he's a long ways back. Yeah, the gap is almost 15 seconds between Alessi and the lead and the two of Villapoto here in third. So Villapoto is really going to have to dig. And I think Reed settled in now behind Villapoto. Reed, we know how crafty he is. He's won races and championships at a level that none of the other riders in the class this year have. And he's not going to just let Villapoto have it, although at the same time, he just looks kind of patient back here. Yeah, he's learning a little bit. He didn't get to see any of this the first moto. He was so far back in the pack, passing Millsaps and Short a couple times each. Now he gets to see the first moto winner. Okay, so that's on the swing, gets on the gas early, hits that burn that way, and all right, got that, make a note of that, and uh, he'll, he'll put all that to work. And if Filippoto makes his way through the pack up to the front, doesn't have that far to go, I don't mean the pack, but the next couple guys, 
I agree it's going to be right there with him. And the crowd begins to come to life again here in San Bernardino, California. Josh Grant about to feel the heat from Ryan Villapoto and Chad Reed. The two and the 22 are on the move while Mike Alessia, the 800 out front, tries to get away. We're not even at the halfway point of this photo yet, so the fitness and the fact that the track is going to change and the lines are going to change. Is going to be for this, this track is so brutal right now, Jason. It's so rough. <laughs> There's some square. Oh, look wow. at that. Wow. Airing oh. out. He didn't clear that, though. Still manages to stay on the right track. Bottoming out a $50,000 set of forks there. You have to jump hard to do that. That's commitment. And Josh, I said he's going to get some company. He can already feel that right now. Because now the crowd sense it. Josh is pretty much hometown here, just like Alessi. Nice new line from those guys coming in to the outside. That's faster than what Alessi was doing. They're all missing the bumps. Those guys are able to rail into that corner and keep their momentum a lot better. So I said the crowd might be uh, in favor of Josh. Come on, hold him off. But they kind of want to see a battle right now. Oh, they're getting it, but it's Philip Poto looking over his shoulder and saying, wait a minute, Chad Reed's catching me. More quickly now, catching Josh Grant. So we're going to have a race for third, and Philip Poto in his trademark style, swapping side to side in the high speed section. Reed goes to the inside, Philip Poto has it covered. Does Reed want to get around Philip Poto at this point, or did Philip Poto just make a few mistakes? What made this battle materialize again, Dave? Chad's figuring it out. And this is big. This is really big right now because it'll. Bill Moto's going out faster than I thought. And he beat me in Supercross too. So, dang, I thought I was going to get away from that guy. Pretty fast. Caught Josh and Chad's catching me. Uh oh. This isn't over. <laughs> He's going to try to use Grant for uh, cover right now as he tries to get around Grant. And put it between himself and Reed. But Grant's a tough customer. He's not intimidated. If you want to bang bars, he will bang bars with the best of them. So, Grant, he does not like being beaten by Bill Pope. These guys have battled it out for a long time in the 250 class. So expect a great race between these three. And as they hook up, second faster than both Villapoto and Reed right now. So, I mean, as fast as these guys look, and as hard as they're charging, and that new line in the back section, Alessi is faster, and I am really impressed at the transformation of both Mike Alessi from the first moto to this one. Yeah, he's fast in the first moto. He's faster, more aggressive, and more assertive this time. All right, who's going to be the most assertive out of this battle? The number two spot. Villapoto wins anyone's race. It's going to be good. Stay tuned on speed for more for the 450 class. The battle continues to rage here in California. Lucas will name for motocross championship. Battle for a second, you're watching here. Josh Grant on the blue bike. Ryan Villapoto on the green. And Chad Reed on the yellow. Throw a blanket over the Villapoto, trying to make a pass on Grant. And Grant, well, like we said, he is not intimidated. He just moved all the way over to the side of the track and blocked Villapoto straight out. And that's why you see this little gap opening back up again. And as Grant and Villapoto bang bars, that's just allowing Reed to reignite his fire back there and try to get back around Villapoto for third. Here comes the Australian again. These guys are hauling, okay? Yes. The track is, is gets, they got a glare going up these hills. They're going to the sun. They can't wait to see where they're going. The time of day we are in now. And Alessi is 14 seconds ahead of this I, I'm not believing how fast the pace is right now. And that Alessi is pulled away. He's showing he has gained for the challenge. It's great racing back here for second, but the whole time it goes down, it allows Alessi to pull further and further away. Yellow flags out. Got to be careful coming into this corner. Side run did not work for Villapoto. He stumbled and ran almost to the hay bale trying to get around Villapoto. And see the shadows right there? They, yeah. they don't, can't see very good going up that hill, I'd imagine. So when you start flirting with the edge of the track and get a little offline, you're off it. Back up Villapoto. Reed, Reed eating roost from the works 450 of Villapoto. He doesn't care. He just wants to get around the guy. And if it takes City back there in a couple of corners to set something up, he'll make that happen. Any questions that anyone might have had and I have myself about how fast is Reed going to be outdoors? Is he just out here to kind of have fun or does he really mean business? How serious is he taking it? Uh, I think he's answering that right now. Let's go back down to the racetrack with Aaron. He's got a report on Chad Reed. Well, guys, not only is it great to see Chad Reed out here racing, but also his mechanic, Mike Gosler, who has returned again. It was kind of unexpected, but actually Mike had said he did somewhat have an idea after Vegas because Chad was really indecisive from about the halfway point of the Supercross season. He said it's not his first rodeo, so he was going to believe it when he saw it. In fact, he said he started building the bike two weeks ago, and Chad only signed his contract just this past Wednesday. He said he knew it was too good to be true. He had big plans to fish in Idaho this summer. 
camera, but apparently he's going to try to squeeze it in whenever he can. All right, thanks a lot for that, Aaron. Gosling's not afraid to work. He'll put the fishing poles away to watch Chad Reed go after Josh Grant. While we were down with Aaron, it looks like Philippopo has gotten around Grant, so it's now Alessi, Filippolo, Grant, Reed, and Millsap has gotten around Short. He's in the number five spot, so Short not only did not hitch a ride with these guys, he's got a little bit further back. Now, the 22 of Reed has got to try to find a way around Grant, because look at the distance Filippoto's already opening up, David. Yeah, fastest in both practice sessions this morning for Chad. And riding his tail off right now and sitting in fourth. But, um, <laughs> how much faster do I have to go, man? Come on. Well, to go back to what Eric was mentioning, though, this was such a late decision for Reed. Grant, Villapoto, Alessi, they were testing for this uh, AMA Pro Racing Motocross Tour months ago. Reed did not do any testing really for outdoors. He only got back about a week and a half ago from a vacation in Australia. He said, all right, I'm going to do this. So Reed might have a little more to do as the year goes on. The speed is definitely there, but right now Grant holding strong in third and Villapoto getting away in second. And we are uh, 18 minutes into this 30 minute plus two lap moto. Now maybe the question is, can Villapoto run in that last 16 seconds? That's the half minute. He's still, still putting time on these guys. Yep. So Mike is, I, I think a lot of it is the lines. I, I'm seeing some little mistakes from these guys. Where they're, they're kind of like, oh man, I should have wheelied over that. And I got to that berm, hit it abrupt, and couldn't get on the gas right away. Each time that we go back to Mike, he's on the gas, and he's not making any mistakes. Here is Alessi cruising past the mechanics area. All systems go. I thought so. Little mistake there, but that's the kind of determination we're seeing. That's from just Alessi how hard he hit the berm. Yes, yeah, exactly. what a mistake. The berm got a big hook in it, and he hit it as fast as he could without getting hung up there. And he's kind of in pain. Look at him hopping through the sand section now. This is a totally different Michael Lesson than we saw by the one. He's kind of the berm blower right through there, like they talk about Justin Marsh in the 250 class. I don't know if I've ever seen Michael Lesson be quite this aggressive, scrubbing jumps and blowing out berms right now up over the front of the bike there. Is that just a, a matter of him going so fast that it just breaks those mistakes? Actually, that's the first time I've seen Mike uh, starting to get hung up a little bit here. Yeah, the shit mistake. Oh, that was great. So to catch up there, but he goes to the inside and uh, makes the move on Grant for third. So Grant dealt with that pressure for a long, long time. Reed finally makes it happen. The question is how much damage was done with Reed losing touch with Villapoto. So you can expect in this last 10 minutes plus two laps of this race, something's going to change. Will it be Reed going back after Villapoto? Will it be Villapoto going back after Alessi? Or maybe Grant going back after Reed? Grant on that inside line wants to try to stay close. All right, there's plenty of racing left here. The strategy. Who's going to play their cards right here at Glen Helen? We'll be back with more when we return. Like the Leslie Outdoor. We are ready for a battle here at Glen Helen. The final few laps, Mike Alessi leading the way of the Rockstar Makita Suzuki. But the Monster Energy Kawasaki rider Ryan Villapoto closing a few mistakes from Alessi while out front. Gets a little bit cross rutted here. There's solid ruts in that phase of that jump. He gets cross rutted in those as well. Lost some time. He dropped four seconds to Villapoto. Here's a look from the bottom of the hill. So he gets a little bit cross rutted right there. That was a nice save, but it takes a little bit of energy out of you. It kind of ruins your flow a little bit. Not as bad as what he had the first moto, but Villapoto is on fire. And with the time we have left and the amount of time that Villapoto is picking up per lap, we got a heck of a finish. At one point, it was 16 seconds, the gap between Alessia and the second place rider. At that moment, it was Josh Gray. Villapoto has got it down to 6.7. So he has taken more than half of the distance out. And if Villapoto can see Alessi in front of him at some point, you know he's already getting a signal from his mechanic, but if he can see him with that. You know what I think happened was Villapoto, or uh, Alessi rather, he pulled out a pretty good lead, and I think I'm just, that's what it looked like. He's going, okay, I've got this. All I gotta do is be smart, not make any big mistakes, and be pretty fast the rest of the moto, and I've got this. He shouldn't have done that, because Villapoto is he's so much like Carmine. He's saying that, and uh, he's digging, and now Alessi is gonna, you can see Alessi just going by the picture, and here comes Villapoto. It's going to be tough. Can Alessi hang on? Will Villapoto run him down? The conclusion is coming your way. Stay tuned to speed. We're back at Glen Helen, Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championships. Getting late in this one. Michael Alessi has led every lap of this race, but Ryan Villapoto 
discarded Chad Reed, discarded Josh Grant, got past those guys, put his head down, and is now going after his rival, Alessi, for the win. That's just the opposite of when they were amateurs. It seemed like Alessi always got the better of Villapoto. Ever since they turned pro, it's been the opposite. Here we go again. Mike, I think, took it a little bit easy when he got that big lead going, I do not even push this that drop, a little bit of a glare. It's not a question of fitness anymore, it's a question of speed. Both these guys are riding with so much heart, but Villapoto is just a little bit faster. And whatever, if, if Mike did take it a little easy there for a while, it's so hard to get yourself back and out of that and go back again. Yeah, this is not a comment on Alessi's fitness. As you put it, he had strength dripping off of him. Oh, yeah. the pitch this weekend. Looked like a Navy SEAL when I rode him over the press tent yesterday. Very confident. But, uh, Maybe he got a little too caught. That's all. This is just what it looked like because I know he's a little bit faster than he looked. He lose the shots over a couple times, and uh, he needed to just race this whole entire race like it was this lap right here. If he had done that, got this momentum, the crowd wouldn't be in it. Be a whole different time. bad timing for Alessi. You see the countdown clock on top of the screen. It's just about to expire now. If they were about a half of a lap slower, they would have gotten the two lap boards. So now they're two and a half laps away. And Villapoto now clearing that big triple cleanly. It's only more difficult to do that late in the race when the track is rough, but he's still airing it out. Now we're the inside line in this very high speed section of Glen Helen. Thinking over 70 miles an hour through here. There's that new outside line that Villapoto has discovered while coming through the pack. Unless he doesn't even know it's there. Was almost pretty sketchy. That was not a scrub. No, that was a mistake. Yeah, Mike is obviously aware of what's going on. He knew he was coming, now he knows. And, you know, if you're Philip Poto and you see Mike starting to look around a lot, you're like, okay, good. He's worried. I got him. Oh, he's got him Still right got to make that pass. He's got to try to go to the inside, scrubbing it over that jump, side by side. This is the fastest section of all. Philip Poto can use an outside line and try an inside here. Side for the first time. What does Alessi have up his sleeve to try to hold Villapoto off? Putting Jake Marsak a lap down. And they're both able to negotiate that. Alessi will have two laps to try to hold Villapoto off. Side by side, Villapoto jumps and takes the lead. Mike changed his lineup a little bit and got in some ruts right there and wasn't able to do that double in the middle. And now the pressure's off of him a little bit right now. And now he's just going, okay, well, it was coming. There was no two ways about that. Nothing he could do. Now he can try to apply the pressure on the Villapoto. Villapoto is just on. He's on form today. When he's riding his best, like he did a couple years ago on the 250, and across the nation, just the fastest in the world on whatever bike. He's back to that kind of confidence, and I don't know who can run with him other than maybe James. Much as Alessi and Villapoto goes back to they're about 12 years old. They had a bitter feud in the amateur ranks on mini cycles. But Alessi said this year he's going to approach it differently. He's going to race his own race. He's not thinking about Villapoto, Reed, Grant, Short, anyone else. He's riding his own race. But this has been the weakness of Mike Alessi's game. We talked about it earlier today, David. He needs to try to win one of these dog fights. He does well when he gets that early lead. But to fight back late in the moto, he's got two laps to try to repay Villapoto and get that lead back. There's a big two-lap board. The crowd is loving this. It was great early. Kind of got a little uh, kind of weak for a bit and heated right back up. And it was, I think, just a momentum shift of Mike thinking I got a big lead. No sense in pushing really hard. And Villapoto pushing really hard. And there you see it. I don't know if Mike said he was with it for a bit, but uh, Villapoto was starting to inch away. He's doing that triple right in front of Mike. And that's just another one of those little things we were going, oh man, he's doing that. I didn't even know about that. I have a different line. And, starting to see the evidence of why Villapoto should be ahead of him. Sideways over the top of that jump, there's this outside line that we were talking about earlier. Unless he's still using the inside, which is very, very rough and choppy. This track is unbelievably rough right now. Well, what's scary is when you go up those hills and you're in the air for a while. You're serving like peanuts on that flight. And then you, you gotta run, you get cross in that like Mike almost did the last time. And, that could be a horrendous crash. So yeah, there's nowhere to relax. I mean, those places you're in the air for a while, but it's so sketchy on the takeoff and so gnarly on the landing to get stopped to the corner at the bottom. It's not really a relaxing point. Just all of it. Just that right there takes strength. The line up for this deep rut that takes a lot of skill. And then up this hill, unless he messed up last time, that 
there's nowhere to rest. This track is brutal. And, you know, I mentioned a little earlier that, uh, talking to you, Jason, this afternoon, that, you know, seeing uh, Ryan Villapoto, he's, he's not, you know, he doesn't look as, as fit as Mike, but it doesn't matter because he's so fast. Well, he certainly hit the gap. He's pulled out over left. Halfway through this moment, he was battling wheel to wheel with Josh Grant and Chad Reed, and they were way back. So not only has he opened up this much of a gap over Alessia in one lap, but look at how far back Reed, who was faster than him in practice, is now. So Philip Hoda has definitely made a statement here. He seems to want to play Helen. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to dominate the entire tour. But if there's any goal, the goal will be to win both models. So Philip Hoda is doing everything he can do. It, it's starting to look a lot like uh, Carmichael or Stewart when they're just Dominant. He's dominant right now, and to get this one under his belt, he's probably going to be even more comfortable. And perhaps more dominant. I mean, just since he was with Reed, it wasn't that long ago, he's put 36 seconds on. I mean, it, it takes a whole motor to do that a lot of times to, to somebody, and, and not somebody as good as Chad. Chad actually still dealing with a little bit of little bit, easy for me to say, of pressure from Josh Grant, although Grant had his feet came off. Oh, that allowed Reed to open it back up, but uh, Reed. Has not raced outdoors with race twice in the last two years. He raced national at Bunch Creek in 07, the motocross the nations last year. So maybe the second moto, the pace, the rough track. Not that he's not in shape, but uh, he was definitely strong in the first half of the second. It's an eye opener for sure. I mean, uh, I was very surprised to see him lay down the fastest laps of practice this morning. It was like, wow, he's ready to go. Yeah, that, that was a shocker to me. I thought he'd be in there, but I didn't know he was going to be the fastest both times. And uh, the bad start in the first moto hurt him. I thought, okay, well, he looked pretty fast, though. And uh, yeah, he was going to get to a certain point. Kind of up. This moto, he had every opportunity, and it's definitely a wake up call for him. He's going to have to be a little bit faster from now on. Villapoto now trying to put the finishing touches. Oh, wait a minute. That is Andrew Short, a lap down. Remember, Short was in fourth, then fifth, and then we lost him off the radar altogether. And that is not typical of Andrew Short, who is known as perhaps the most consistent rider in this pack. And that is a huge pile of points for one of our really serious championship contenders. And Andrew Short just gave up. So Villapoto, everything going his direction now. Now he goes to Short's even further back than he expected. Ryan Villapoto, he mentioned. Three straight championships, undefeated for titles in the 250 class, and then he goes 1-1 in his debut in the big class. Carmichael has been able to match that. In that last shot, come up the hill, where unless he made his mistake earlier, he's not that far off. He, he lost, you know, he to open up a gap, and he stayed about the same. So Alessi is fighting as hard as he can. Alessi wanted to come out here. The first motor did not go the way he wanted. He played his hand right in the second moto. Hello! He's still making mistakes in this last lap. And you're right, he's not that far back there, but at the same time, Alessi had the game plan he wanted. And the opponent was still at the top of the boat. Alessi works as hard as anybody. Yeah, when I saw the start, but he had it again. And you can see he was a little bit more focused, a little more intense, knew what he needed to do. And was motivated, a little uptight with the first moto. And I thought, well, you know, with where Bill Bono's starting, Unless he was opening up on him, I really thought it was a done deal. But man, that just goes to show uh, just how impressive of a performance Villapoto is putting in today. And it's just going to boost his confidence so much more. Here it is, folks. History in the making. Three straight titles in the 250 class. And he goes 1 1, sweeping both motos in his debut in the 450 class. Ryan Villapoto has conquered Glenn Helen. We'll be right back after this to talk to our winners. You can consider it a perfect way to make your debut into the 450 motocross class. Ryan, you are the only other person other than the greatest of all time to pull off the feat that you did, which is win your first 450 after three 250 championships. What does this mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. You know, this uh, this Glen Helen track today is probably probably the roughest track that we've uh, ridden in a couple years. So it's it's an awesome track, and uh, you know, it, uh, it's really a man's track. So. You know, I just can't thank my team enough, Monster Energy Kawasaki, and uh, you know, just everybody that's helped me out. Thank you. Take us through the pass for the lead over your rival, Michael Essie. Yeah, you know, he had a huge lead on me. I didn't get the the start that I wanted, and uh, you know, he's great at starts, and I was. I was just working my through the way, way through the pack, and I seen him way up there, and uh, you know I just kept on pushing. Um, didn't try to ride over my head, but just tried to catch him, and that's ended up what happened. So it was, uh, you know, it was a good race. Congratulations on your victory! Way to start off the season. All right.
tonight. Brian Villapoto has conquered Glen Helen. Let's get a look at our progressive hole shot replay, David Bailey. Apparently it doesn't matter where Mike Lillessi starts. He can start back at the truck and probably still get the hole shot out of the middle. Kind of closes off Andrew Short, right back on the power and just makes sure he has it. The first moto was kind of a dead heat with Mike Brown. This time, no question about it. Villapoto buried in the pack, didn't matter. He came through it. Let's go back down to the podium with Aaron. Mike Alessi was so close to feeling that bit of victory. Mike, this track has got the best of you every time. You've come so close. How heartbreaking was this moment for you today? Uh, you know, it's a good moto. It wasn't heartbreaking at all, you know? Uh, actually, it's a good thing because now we let Ryan take the momentum a little bit here, you know? Uh, it, it's a long season. It's, it's, it's going to go all the way down the wire for sure between me and him. And second's good. You know, I got a great start and I was checked out. I rode my own pace. You know, I saw Ryan catch me and I wasn't going to, you know, put it in the fifth gear and go wide open and crash and put myself on the ground because you can only lose the championship in the first round. You can't win it. So good day. We got second. You know, we'll work hard this week. Go back seven days from now to Hangtown and come back strong and try and do it there. Congratulations on a very strong performance. Well, Mike's a pretty good spirit. Had a tough run in the first moto, but both motos count. And with that strong second moto performance, he ends up second overall behind Alessi. And there you see the overall points they scored on the day. That's championship points. Grant edges Reed for the third spot. Millsaps in fifth. Let's go back to the podium with Josh Grant. Well, it's hard to believe it's another rookie back up here on the podium. Josh, what a moment it was for you this afternoon. Take us through this day. Did you expect to be back here up on the podium, especially after the success you had at Supercross? Yeah, you know, I just after that first moto, I kind of felt where I was at compared to everybody. And I mean, the track here at Glen Ellen's super rough. So I just, you know, I want to thank Joe Gibbs Racing, Toyota Yamaha, all the guys that helped me out this week. I'm just ready to go to Hangtown and do it there. For the very latest motorcycle racing news and results, go to speedtv.com and get speed green alerts from Kawasaki. From huge wins to big upsets where the action happens, you'll know. Text KX to 77333 and get free text alerts. Speed green alerts presented by Kawasaki.